Hey what's up YouTube, in this video I'll be showing you how to make the Grinch's house slash cave, which is his house, which we have recreated on a very small scale, featuring Max pulling a sleigh of stolen Christmas presents. In real life, yeah you heard me correctly, in real life you can actually stay in a recreated Grinch themed cave. I'll let you take that in for a second. So I have used inspiration there to make the inside of the build. So whilst perhaps not specific to the movie, the interior is still pretty cool. Please do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and if you have any suggestions for more Christmas themed builds I'd love to hear them down below in the comment section. Also watch until the very end of the video to see where we place the Grinch's house in the city. Here are some of the materials that we will use throughout the build. Not only will we need everything in this double chest, but everything in this single chest as well. Begin by placing six stone extending up from the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six. Extend to the right by one, up by two, one, two, and then right by ten. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, down by 2, 1, 2, right by 1, and then all the way down to the ground. We then want to extend the block on the ground backwards by 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then we want to extend up and connect all the way to the front and then extend right, follow the shape that we have on the front of the build onto the back, so extend right one, up two, and then right by ten. Alternatively, just make sure that you line up with the front of the build, and then that negates any need for counting at all. Extend all the way down, join all the way back to the very front, and then connect some of the pivotal points of the build front to back. Note, we don't really need to fill all of this in, at least not yet. Some of it will, in the end, need to be filled in properly, but a lot of this is going to be required for the inside of the build. So, now that we have reached this point, we are going to place two stone extending inwards diagonally from each one of the four corners at the top of the build. So I'll show you what this looks like. That is absolutely perfect. So the purpose of this is now that we have each one of those four stones, we want to place a row of four stone on top of these. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. So we then want to extend these stones in both directions. So this one, for example, we want to extend the stone outwards on this side and this side. The same on the front here, this side and this side, this side and this side, this side and this side. And then we can once again connect the entire top of the build together. So we are just forging the shape of the cave right now. And this is what we have so far. So this is actually looking really good. This is a large portion of the cave mapped out. On the front of the build, we want to place on top of this stone block here, three more stone blocks. One, two, three. Extend over to the right by one, two, three four blocks and then down like this. We actually want the equivalent of that on the back as well. So on top of this block, one, two, three, then extend one, two, three, four, and then down just like this. We now have to make this a little bit more shapely by first of all extending all of these blocks inwards. So that is on the front and the back just like this. Then we will start over here on the front left side. We want to place a stone block extending up from here, and we want to place four of them. So in this position, one, two, three, four, and then right one, up by two, one, two, right one, 
up one, right by three, one, two, three, down one, right by two, one, two, and then down two, one, two, left one, and then just extend all the way down like this. So the shape that we will end up with is this rather strange shape right here. So we actually want to have this on the back also. So I'm actually just going to extend the back of this all the way back here, and then I'm just going to copy from the front of the build the exact same shape. So there's no real reason to run through those steps again, as long as you can make sure that you line up with the front of the build and it will become obvious whether we've done this correct in a little while. But the point of this is that we want to end up with this shape. And we're not quite finished. We want to then connect the right side of this shape together. So just these three rows that kind of overhang a little bit. And then we want to take these middle blocks, this one, two, three, four middle blocks, right, on top, and then extend outwards just like so. So it kind of looks like some sort of like bird or something, a beak, or maybe like part of a Santa hat without like the bobble on the end. But this is the general shape of the Grinch cave. So we actually need to extend part of the Grinch cave even further backwards. We're going to begin with this stone block here, extend it back by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can extend all the way over to the opposite side and join. We then want to extend upwards and connect to this part of the cave here. And then we want to follow the shape of the cave. So if we just take a look from the side, it might, may, might make a little bit more sense. We then want to follow the shape of the cave, extending up and inwards like this. And once we join all of this together and we kind of have the skeleton of this, this is all of the room that we require at the back of the cave. So there is going to be the main living area, which is kind of like in here. And then there is like a bedroom, bathroom situation that is all the way back here. And that is the part of the cave that I would recommend blending into like an actual mountain or a hillside or something similar like that. Like that shouldn't really be visible. The part that I want to see is this shapely part right here, especially as we progress through this. On the front of the build, we we first of all want to place one, two, three rows of stone extending across and connecting the entire bottom front part of the cave together like this. So this is kind of the walking around level of the cave. This will extend inwards and this is where all of the living area is going to be sitting inside. But starting over here on the left, we want to extend right and place two stone, one, two, extending right. We then want to place an oak trapdoor flipped outwards like this, then a stone, then we want to leave a gap of three, one, two, three, and then place a row of stone extending right, join all of those blocks all the way up like this, so we are going to limit the amount of space that we have right here, place a spruce door here, and then surround the door with a green concrete. Then we want to add a row of stone just above the door to cover up all of that empty space, an upside down stone stair in each one of those corners, and then a stone button right here. Next, we are going to make a little bit of a platform in front of the entrance by extending this stone block, or maybe even this one to make it a little bit easier, forwards by two, one, two, extend in by one, forwards, and then all the way over to the right by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Extend in one, right one, and then back. We then want to make this row of stone as high as the entrance. So it wants to come all the way up to here, just like this. And then we can actually fill the inside of this in with white wool. 
because we want to have some snow, like so. And we, we are jumping the gun with this a little bit, but we will also decorate the area with a mixture of, assuming that the snow is not going to melt, in which case I wouldn't bother, a mixture of white carpet, snow, snow block, white wool, any sort of like white block which would emulate snow that is either snow or, you know, looks enough like it will work nicely. Then we want to make a little bit of a... It's, it's not necessarily a staircase since it's made out of stone slabs, but more of a ramp that leads up to this area. So this is opposite the doggy door here. We want to place a stone slab, then extend right, down, right, down, right, down, right, down, right, down, right, just like this. And then we're going to fill underneath this in using stone. And something that we can do this entire time also is you don't have to have an area that is like this clean. Like because it is like rocks and stuff like that, like you might want to mess up the area a little bit and place more like more slabs and kind of like chop up the area, like make it higher in some places, knock out blocks in other places. You could even add some cobble. You can add some different gray blocks, but just to keep it simple for the tutorial's sake, something like that is really, really nice. And you can see it just gives it a lot more character. And that's something that you can apply all the way up to the very top of the cave and backwards as well. Before we continue adding details to the mountain slash cave, we are just going to fill all of the sides of the faces of the build in using stone. The goal of this is to make the inside of our cave area as hollow as possible because that gives us more room to work with and then we can artificially add depth and character afterward. With all of the cave walls filled in, we are now able to add some of the, shall we say, less than hospitable signs that the Grinch has dotted around. So the first of which is right here. This is a spruce sign stood up that simply says no entry. We have one back here that says no Xmas. We have a sign above the doggy door that simply says Max. We have a sign here that simply says, go away. That might be my favorite one. We have another sign up here. So this is a little bit more interesting. We have a an oak fence here, lever gap oak fence here, oak planks on top, and then an oak sign in front of this. So exclamation mark, warning, exclamation mark, next line, Grinch. There we go. So those are all of the signs, and do feel free to dot more around if you would like to have more of them. But we also have a bunch of dripstone and andesite wall to add from this overhanging part here. So we are going to add a point of dripstone here, a big one here, a small one here, an andesite wall here, 
a couple of endensite wool extending down like this, and then that might do. Yeah, that, that that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. If you want, you can even add like a button or something like that, and I think that that will do nicely. So. I think that I'll do this a little bit more comprehensively at the end, but I'm going to use snow, and I'm just going to snack, snack, <laughs> stack snow and white carpet, just kind of like all around, more so the visible part of the cave. So like, like I said, like the front part of the cave, like most of this would have snow on it, and uh, depending upon how crazy you want to get, like you can really really add some detail with this, like add some piles, like you don't even have to add that much of it if you don't want to, but do mix some white carpet in as well and any other sort of white block that you might want to add. I'm adding kind of like a, a low level, just kind of like on the upper part, so I don't think that solid blocks would look good necessarily, but coming all the way to about here, like I said, this part of the cave would preferably be uh, kind of like hidden inside of a mountain, so only around here and these sides am I really looking to add all of the snow. Yeah, something like that I think is pretty good. I don't think you have to go too crazy with it. Before we add any further details to the outside part of this build, we are now going to head inside and work on the interior. The first thing that you may notice is that we don't actually have a floor, we fell right into a cavern. So we are going to place a row of stone extending from just underneath the doorway all the way back, and we will use the majority of the inside of this space. Next, we are going to add a layer of stone just behind the entrance area here to box in the door and the doggy door just so that it doesn't stick out as much. There we go. Then, it doesn't really matter which side you pick for this, we want to make a wall that kind of cuts the cave in half. I actually think it's about here, but we need to have a row of 10, and let's mark this out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's perfect, so we need to have a row of 10, and this 10th block here, we are going to place a stone and then extend all the way across like this. So if you also have those little stones that stick out, you simply just want to extend them across and turn that into a wall, just like this. We also have to have a doorway opposite where we actually have the front door. I believe that that is it, that's perfect. So this is one room. That's another. We will leave that as it is for now. No, we won't. Okay, so this end room here, we want to have a row of five right in the middle. So it's like, this is the middle, yeah? So two blocks on the left, two blocks on the right, and then we want to create a wall in between the two sides that we will eventually knock part of out, but we will do that a little bit later on. Or well, maybe we'll just do it now. So this is like the bedroom area, and we're going to knock a two by two row out here and a two by two row out here, and we are going to box the rest of this area in. So you can even add a cheeky bit of lighting by placing sea lanterns in the ceiling here and here as well, and stone just like this. But we can remove all of these bookshelves. That was just for measuring purposes. And you can see now we have divided the Grinch's cave into uh, two handy, two, two and a half, kind of three, technically sort of rooms. But let's not get technical, I failed math. Step one in furnishing the cave. At the front right hand side of the main entrance, we are going to place a row of six, one, two, three, four, five, six bookshelves that extend all the way up and hit our stone. We will then extend the left two forwards a row and the right two forwards a row like this. Then, we want to leave a gap of one here and place a mangrove stairs. 
In front of this, a dark oak fence with a daylight detector on top, and in front of this, a crimson slab. Against this wall, two oak fence, item frame, spyglass. So we have a kind of telescope. Then, underneath this area, we want to remove all of these stone and one row backwards, and we want to replace all of these stone here with black glazed terracotta, which is not a material that I get to use very often. Perfect. Next, we want to place a lectern here with a book and quill inside of it, a birch slab in front, left of this an end rod with a candle on top, left of this an armor stand in the corner with a red leather hat on the armor stand, then next to this, two green concrete on the wall with spruce trapdoors underneath, and then we want to stack some spruce trapdoors left and right of this, and also on top, just like this. Next, we are going to place a sideways oak stairs here, and then dig in the ground to the right, one, two, three, place sea lanterns one row underneath this empty space, and different colourful banners on top of these sea lanterns. We then place oak stairs in front of the banners, and then one sideways, just like this. And then next, we are going to dig four rows, one, two, three, four, extending in front of this, and replace all of this area with yellow glazed terracotta, just like so. We then want to place spruce slabs here, here, and actually here, here, extend them one row up, join them together in the middle, place an item frame on the corner here with a book, then stack a bunch of candles next to the book. Over here, we are going to place a couple of chains with a lantern on top, just like so. And then against this wall, we are going to place a row of three spruce planks, so kind of like in the middle of the wall, like this. Then place a loom in front of the left and right blocks, a lectern in front of the center, with a book and quill on top of, inside of the lectern, I actually don't know which is the correct one. And then upside down spruce stairs on top of this, and then we are going to stack spruce trap doors. So we're going to have to move a little bit here, so we're going to uh, stack some spruce trap doors left and right, and then just replace that wall that we have destroyed. And then on top of this, we want to place a single bamboo fence here on the left, two on the middle, and three on the right, extending up. Then, two flipped up crimson trap doors, left and right of the lectern, with a crimson trap door connecting them together at the top, and then a red carpet on top of that. And then all we have to do to kind of like complete this room is just shape it a little bit. So all, all I'm really interested in doing is just making it look a little bit more like a cave. So what I mean by that is just shaping the inside a bit so that it's not just so... Like, j just look up, like, it just looks so uniform, like, we could add, you know what, we could even whip out the dripstone and the wall, and just add some wall, add some stone about the place, add some dripstone, just make it so that it just isn't so uniform. I mean, so, some of it you can obviously leave, like, with the top here, like, you could just kind of, like, leave, leave this, but it needs to, it definitely needs to have some sort of shape to it. Like, it doesn't have to be too crazy, I, I think that something like that might actually have just absolutely nailed it, but... Yeah, I think that that'll do. It, I think that the more that you try and do, sometimes it can look a little bit weird, but I, I think that I'm quite happy with this. That, that will do nicely. So, moving into the back part of the cave now, we first of all want to place a row of three. One, two, three red wool here across the middle of the back and extend these two rows forwards, white carpet on top of the first row of red wool, and then on the right here, warped planks, warped stairs, 
item frame in front and then a clock inside of that. End rod in this back corner with a candle on top. Then we want to destroy one row in front of the bed and place black glazed terracotta with an item frame on top of this block right here. Then add a scaffolding here with a flower pot on top, fern. Then a stone button in front of this warped plank and neverite boots inside of this item frame. We then want to add a little bit of stone just at the back here with some stone stairs kind of like here and here just to make it a little bit more cavey. Something like that kind of like adds a little bit of interest to the room. Then next we are going to remove, I believe, yeah, we're going to remove this row of stone here. And we want to make a mirror by placing a loom on the ground, white banner in there, with grey dye, add the bend effect, white dye in there, and then add a gradient effect, throw blue dye in there, and then add a blue border. Grab that, throw that in the corner here, and there we have a simple mirror. Inside of this area here, we are going to place an armor stand with a chest to the right of it, trip wire hook above it. We then want to outfit the armor stand with a red leather tunic and then stick some doors in front of that. And there we have a closet. Then over here on the right, place an upside down smooth quartz stairs with a trip wire hook above it, right of it a cauldron with an oak trap door on top. Flip that up and then we are going to place an end rod here with a light blue banner across it or we could even do it just one row in front just so that there's a little bit more room in there and perfect we have a little bathroom with that final bit of detail we have officially completed the inside of the grinch cave but there is a little bit more work to be done so i really like the idea of having max attached to the sleigh of stolen presents somewhere around this entrance sort of area so in the ground we are going to dig two blocks like this replace those two blocks with mangrove slabs and then dig this way two more times replace those with mangrove slabs we then want to place a mangrove fence on top of these front two blocks and then behind these we want to place upside down mangrove stairs to give us this then we want to place and this is ever so slightly tricky mangrove hanging signs on top of the upside down stairs like so Next, we are going to make Max, so this requires a wolf spawn egg, tame him, make him sit in front of the sleigh, then we are going to name him with the name tag, and we are simply just going to have Max, of course, so we can name our little friend, and he will sit in front of the sleigh. Then we are going to leash him to the fence at the front of the sleigh, and then fill the sleigh up with various different shulker boxes. So these simply just look like presents, which of course the Grinch has stolen. Something like this will look really good. Then if we place mangrove signs on top of the, or rather on the side of the lower presents, just like this that is absolutely perfect and the Grinch inadvertently stole some Christmas trees as well so a plant pot with a fern in it or any kind of sapling kind of looks like that and I think that that's just a really fun thing to have at the entrance of the cave. Next I'm just going to add some spruce trees kind of just to the lower left side of the cave just because I think it'll kind of help to blend the cave into the environment a little bit. I, I'm going to try and strike a balance here. Like, I don't want too many, but I don't want too few because it is kind of like a dense forest at the base of the cave. See, that, that might be a little bit too many, but something like that is perfectly good. And then we are also going to just add some snow around the base of this. So I'm just going to use white wool. Now, of course, this looks a little bit weird just out in the open in, in the middle of a grass super flat world, but integrated into some sort of mountain, I think that this would look absolutely awesome. Now, the closest thing that we have to a mountain in Mini City is this giant hill that this modern mansion was built on. So, we are going to try and stick 
the Grinch's house covertly on the back of this hill. I think that will look really cool here, and of course, it's an insane Easter egg to have. Like, if you come across this, then you are really exploring the city. And that's it. I do hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Please do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you're looking for more fun things to add to your city, whether they are cartoon related or actual city builds, look no further than the mini city and the cartoon house build playlists down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Good. Bye.